This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. Open phones here at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Among George's many jobs in this uh, locale called Ramsey Solutions, he is the host of the uh, newly uh, popular big hit, the Fine Print Podcast, where he explores the fine print that is screwing you over in various industries. And uh, George, the I, is it the is it the new one that just dropped? I picked it up on my walk this weekend on um, uh, Christmas holiday spending. Holiday yes. spending is that yes. brand new? Is that the That's one that the just dropped? That's the newest one. Okay, I'm, I'm, look at that. Look at me. I'm You're caught, caught up. up. It's so I'm great. Caught up. Thanks yeah. for listening, by the way. Sure, I'm, I'm trying to trying to boost the listenership here, but the uh, uh, it that's really that was really intriguing and really good. You guys did a great job with that. Thank you. I hadn't seen the outline or the wireframes on it or anything, and so I was just having the full user experience as if I was a consumer instead of oh, the yeah. instead of the owner of the place. And um, it was uh, it's really insightful. I mean, with all this disruption with supply chain, inflation, cray cray out there, I mean, cr- you know, crack a doodle, man. The whole oh, yeah. the whole culture's got lost its dead gum mind. And then let's have Christmas. <laughs> Right. Well, we, so. we started it going, OK, let's do one on Black Friday and what you need to know to not overspend during the holidays. And all of a sudden, this global supply chain disaster hit and we're going, oh, my gosh, there's more to this story. And on top of that, you've got all of the baggage that comes with the holidays when it comes to family and expectations and boundaries. And so we had Dr. John Deloney come on there to talk about not only how to curb overspending, but how to deal with family and how to say no and how to set up healthy boundaries that are respectful to family. And you get a lump of coal and <laughs> yes. you get a lump of coal and you too that adds to the stress of of the holidays yeah so i mean i couldn't i did i hadn't really half paid attention because my need for stuff is fairly low uh but 28 billion dollars worth of goods sitting in la harbor long beach harbor alone on 73 ships or something yeah you nailed it i mean that's that's real good i'm very pretty pretty close to that your memory there pretty close to that because i was just like that's a lot of money floating out there, and they can't get it off. Yeah. And that was when we shot it. Shot or when you when we did the recording. When you did the recording, but might, they may have gotten some of them offloaded now. But yeah, it's still just. And then oh, uh, might be a little backup with the old truck drivers after that. Oh my goodness! Basically, everything is bottlenecked, and it's making everything expensive. It's hard to get, which means you've got to plan early. You've got to budget better. You need to budget more, and uh, that with all of the expectations with family, that can turn into a disaster, and you have a lot of regret come January. We pulled a ton of our stuff out of overseas production ramsey products and things we've got a few things that come but we used to regularly buy those cartons and you know a whole carton full the back big in the shipping day, financial peace university kits back when they we had kits you know we'd have a whole carton coming on a slow boat from china thing coming over and uh it was like very inexpensive and it, it went it's like twenty two thousand dollars a carton now in September, it was ten thousand dollars a carton, and in June, it was three thousand dollars a carton. It, it has uh, quadrupled, I think. No, more than that. More I mean, than it, quadrupled. It was, it was nuts. Yeah. I couldn't. Wow. Yeah, that'll add to the cost of the goods inside the carton. Hello. Yeah. Because uh, these businesses are not eating this stuff. You you people are. It's gonna. Uh, the consumer it, gets it, the if cost. Old Barbie is afloat on the seas. <laughs> old Barbie's cost just went up Do considerable. Still her get value, Barbies? her value just went through the roof. That's amazing. Is our American Girl dog the um, do- doll? Maybe dogs. Are they too made in the America? Next. I don't know. I don't know. But it's it's getting wild out there. We're It'd seeing be Goldman a Sachs bass backwards if they weren't, but but they might not be. I don't. So know. getting into port is three times slower, and it's astronomically more expensive. Yeah. So it's causing all sorts of issues. And so I mean. 
I, I, Santa Claus has got his work cut out for him. The old boy's going to have to get a lot of that magic There's dust a out. shortage of batteries, TVs, gaming consoles, laptops, cell phones, cordless vacuums. I mean, pretty much everything you could want this Christmas. No, it's a pretty jo- good joke line, too. That if you can't get a cordless vacuum, you just can't get a vacuum. That's you can't good. get one. Who's getting corded vacuums in 2021? I'm not getting a vacuum. Not on so purpose. I wouldn't know, but um, I was going to have Rachel come over and do it, but... <laughs> It might be a long wait. <laughs> uh, I'd be hard pressed to, to you're, make that. You're, think, ask. you're thinking that's probably not the one of not it's the not one of my children to have to do that. No, no, <laughs> she's got her own problems. So, bottom line is, what do they do for Christmas? And they need to listen to the Fine Print Podcast to tell them what to do. But yeah, to get ready for Christmas this year is going to be particularly strenuous. The big takeaway here is you've got to shop early. You've got to be looking for the deals because there's not many of them out there to find because the retailers aren't that desperate and there's not that much to get rid of. And so you're going to have to really do your research and really ratchet down that every dollar budget when it comes to holiday spending and get it done as early as possible. And I heard something else in there that I liked even better. Uh, anytime you're buying anything and you get married to a particular thingy, mm. you are about to get messed over in the negotiation. You need lots of options. Yes. And so an A, B, a C, even a D, uh, a fallback option, uh, default option in case uh, A and B are not available and C is triple what it should be because of these shortages and no other apparent reason, then uh, you need to be, you know, listen, the way you survive crazy is you don't join crazy. <laughs> Right? you got to have options. Yeah. Well, we, we joked about it being like that movie Jingle All the Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sinbad when they're fighting over the, the final toy. And that's what it's going to be like this holiday season when you want the certain model and you need that specific item and it's hard to find and it's already stressful going to the mall. You know, I'm not sure how that movie didn't end up a Christmas classic. It is to me, in my it, heart. It, it, in your heart? Yeah. Okay, you're the right age group. Okay. <laughs> Which we found out, this is the most fascinating part in the whole podcast. The research showed that there are over 200 Hallmark Christmas movies. Wow. As of this season. Well, and none of them made the Sinbad level. No. Funniest Sinbad li- line ever has nothing to do with Christmas. My dad used to put me in time out. He'd take time out of his day to whip my butt. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good. Great Sinbad That one line. held up. Great. That one stuck with me. Yeah. Oh, time out. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. So, Christmas, you need a plan. You need alternates. You need to shop early and often. And you take your time and slow down. If you think you're going to stroll in there on the 23rd or the 24th, gentlemen, to do your classic guy shopping, you're going to find nothing in there. Nothing out there. May not even be toilet paper on the shelves at that yeah. point. And uh, scarcity marketing. It's a real thing. So pay attention to the marketing and what they're telling you and what's happening to your brain. Limited time, limited quantity. They jack up your brain. And it's real now. Yeah. Everything's limited. So be careful out there. We probably have a a marketing uh, mention coming up that says something about Ramsey, something being scarce, just coming up. Right after we did that, I'm sure. That's usually the way that stuff falls. But but we don't tell you something scarce around here unless it truly is. I think we've got plenty of everything this year. From Ramsey stuff, books and we wallets and everything, except R- Christy Wright's uh, the gold uh, calendar. Yeah. The calendar. The ca- man, that thing, that's going to, we are going to run out of those. And we're not going to be able to get more because of the stuff we're talking about. So if you want to get one of those, you best get on it. There you go, folks. There it is. Check it out. The Fine Print Podcast. All kinds of wonderful information there every week. And this week featuring how to shop for Christmas properly. George Camel, my host, co-host of this hour. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're ready to get out there and find a job you love, then you need to hear this. Job hunting can be stressful and time consuming, but my friends at ZipRecruiter have made the whole job search way easier. ZipRecruiter is rated the number one job site in the US by G2 and it's free. So how does it work? First, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Then create a free profile and let their technology do the hard work by finding and sending you jobs that are a great fit. And get this, ZipRecruiter pitches your profile to companies whose jobs match your skills and experience. If someone from that company likes your profile, they can personally invite you to apply for the job. So if you're ready for an easier job search, check out ZipRecruiter. Sign up for free 
right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Sign up today absolutely free and let ZipRecruiter work for you. My co-host today, this is the Ramsey Show. Common sense for your dollars and cents in a culture where common sense is so rare that having it is like having a superpower. Andrew is in Atlanta. Hi, Andrew. How are you? Well, gentlemen, pleasure to speak with you. You too. What's up? Um, So I have, I was just recently informed by the all-knowing government that my student loans are being transferred to Navient. And given the questionable nature of that country, company i'm wondering if that changes my debt snowball the student loans are nineteen thousand dollars they're currently fourth in line in my debt snowball and uh, i estimate being fully debt free in uh the spring of 2023 okay what's in front of it uh two credit cards and a land contract which i also wonder if the land contract carries more risk given something you said recently yeah yeah. Um, so the land contract's almost paid out. It's not much owed. It, it'll, it'll actually, it, it, yeah, it actually is probably number two. Yeah. Um, it's actually hard for me to get my head around not doing. So the what is the first. what is number? The student loans are number four. What is number three? Number three would be a credit card. Yeah. $11, what's the balance? Dollars. What's the balance? Eleven thousand. Okay. And what's your household income? One ten. Okay. All right. So the stuff after the student loan is what's dragging you out into 23, not before. Correct. Because you ought to be, I mean, bust, you ought to be busting through these that, four, making 110 fast, right, George? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as far as Navient yeah, goes. Yeah, I'm making some changes. Yeah, Navient sucks, but they all do. Yeah, I don't th- think you have any worries there. I wouldn't adjust the snowball because of that. No. Um, especially with your income. The, I'd get these credit cards out I of my life. I was just concerned about, you know, f- from borrowed future and things. No, they're, they're, they're all, they they're all bad. Be, Navient is wrong. They suck. Yeah, Navient is just one we featured in borrowed future, but they all suck. And you know what? It'll okay. probably be transferred again before you pay them off. And so that's just the nature okay. of, of that industry. So I wouldn't be worried about them screwing you over. I mean, it doesn't. whoever it's sitting with in the student loan world, is they're, they're not as much crooked as they are just incompetent. <laughs> Okay. Which is actually worse, because crooked you can actually catch. Incompetence you can't fix. And so you just have to manage. You have to watch your account and make sure they're posting stuff the way they're supposed to all the time anyway, uh, whoever it is. So just watch it like a hawk and keep it right there is what I would do. Yeah, I don't see any need okay. to, to move it around in the debt snowball. I think you just stay the course and use this income to your advantage and maybe try to increase it if you can to speed this thing up. Because we're talking... You're done with the student loan, though, in what, six months? Yeah, I'm, I'm probably done with it in, um, at, uh, by the end of 22. Uh, I've got a whole yeah. spreadsheet that tracks. Yeah, I think that's a little late. I think you need to turn your snowball up a little bit. Because 30000 is the last two. I don't know what the first two are, but making 110 you need to get there. I mean, yeah, you need to get there inside of six months. Yeah, I don't want to keep so, these things around like yeah. a pet. But, but that, that's, a, that's a different subject. But, no, I wouldn't move it to answer your question. I would watch them like a hawk. But any of you that have a student loan, you need to watch them all like a hawk because they just can't find their butt with both hands. I mean, they really are incompetent. They're just not. I mean, and don't care. And they don't care. They just do what I mean, they just lie. Yeah, with every know. payment, I'm going to be checking the website, making sure they yeah. took out exactly what needed to be taken out and no more, yeah. and watching that thing. Constantly auditing your own account. Yeah, that's what you've got to do with these people. Oh, the Navient people are just, it's just a, whew, so. Michael's in Houston, Texas. Hey, Michael, how are you? I am doing just fine. Thanks so much for uh, taking my call, guys. Sure. What's up? I got two things for you. Um, Number one, I wanted to at least provide a testimonial for some of the advice that you're giving on here. My wife turned me on to your show about four years ago. And um, in four years, we are completely debt-free. 
We've paid our house off. Wow. We're 36. Thank you. And um, our net worth now is about $1.2 million. Whoa! So Way to go, Baby really Steps Millionaire. I'm proud of you. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. Thank you. Thank you. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of sacrifices. But, uh, yeah, we are completely in the green. Touchdown, man. Incredible. Way to go, hero. Thank you. Thank you. So what this kind of leads me to, um, it's kind of a two-part question. Number one, as far as our retirement goes, uh, we have about $730,000 at this point um, with an investment company, and that's already been invested. And our next goal is that we're still living in the house that we bought together. It was our first house. And um, we're just starting to feel a little bit cramped, so we're looking for an upgrade. Good. So while I'm saving up enough money for the house, and let's say that I need to save up about another um, one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars. My question for you is this: Should I feel, as I'm saving up that much money because it's a lot, should I feel the pressure to continue putting that towards my seven hundred and thirty thousand in retirement? And then the other question is that if this is going to take me about two to three years, I'm a little bit unsure in how to invest it. And I know that you can't call the stock market, and I know that you can't time it, mm-hmm. but my biggest fear is that I invested in something, and then there are two to three years from now, um, I have less than what I put into it. Yeah. So uh, the 750000 is in retirement accounts, right? Yes. Like, if you take it out, you get a penalty, right? Yes. yes. So you can't put it in that if you want to use it to buy a house. No, no. The uh, the uh, idea was that I wanted to take that money and start to invest it somewhere else, as in open up like a secondary. So are you saying you're going to stop contributing to that retirement account to save up for this house? That was kind of my question, is that while I'm saving up for the house, should I continue to still be putting money in my retirement accounts? Or do I have your blessing to say you're in a really good place right now, um, you should put it towards the house? You're a millionaire. You don't need our blessing for anything. <laughs> but but we would tell you as a matter of course just to continue to put 15% aside and above that save for your upgrade. That shouldn't make or break your upgrade to lose out on that 15% exactly. that you're investing. So I would yeah, you know, anything above that 15%, I would be putting away and if it's 2 to 3 years that I don't I wouldn't be putting it in mutual funds. That's a little bit short of a time horizon. Um, right. But like when we saved up for our house, if it's 3 to 5 years, we worked with Smartvester Pro, we invested that and it grew it grew a little bit, which really helped us with our down payment situation. So one if you've to got three, three to five years, years. One to three years is a little bit tricky on the market. So here, here's, the, here's, exactly the, here's, your, here's your here's your probability. So you can split it up, do some of each if you want, uh, in terms of uh, whether you put it in money market or whether you put it in mutual funds. If you leave a mutual fund, a general market mutual fund, good growth stock mutual funds across the four types we talk about alone for five years, 96% of the time it will make money. If you leave it alone three years, 67% of the time it'll make money. One out of three times it'll lose money. Okay. But it won't lose a lot. I mean, it might lose, it might lose, you know, you might put in $100,000, it might be worth 95. You know, or something. So it's not like you're going to lose all your house money, but you probably won't You won't make any money that's appreciable. And so that's why I said you might play the market on some of it and some of it you might not play the market. But even by playing the market in air quotes, I'm going to be in some very conservative mutual funds and money markets. Or I'm going to be all in money markets if I just don't want to worry about it at all. Uh, but if I really want to take a little bit of risk, you might lose a few thousand dollars if you're only leaving it alone three years. Yeah, and with a high yield savings account, I mean, you're looking at a half percent, so it's not the sexiest thing, but it is guaranteed, and so you have that um, yeah. as far versus losing money in the market in a short period of time. Exactly, and the way I look at it is, you know, a typical mutual fund, year in and year out, averages ten to twelve percent. Okay, a decent decent track record mutual fund. All right, and so it's got to do really sucky to get all the way down to a half a percent. Yeah. And so I, I personally am willing to play that, but but I don't want you to lose a little bit of money and then go, oh, I lost all my house money. You didn't lose all your house. You did, instead of having 100000 you got ninety five. you know, but you might have had 120 you know, too. That's the other side of it. That, yeah. That's your spread of risk. It's not all or nothing. This is not a roulette wheel. So you're not playing, you know, you're not playing Bitcoin, you're not playing Beanie Babies, and you're not playing gold here. This is a, a low-risk scenario. So your range of risk is really small, really small. So either way you go. But if you're going to get down under three years, I start to get nervous, and I just start to park it in money markets. Uh, if I'm in your situation, that's what I would do. 
So, good question. Thank you for joining us. This is The Ramsey Show. On baby step number one, eh? How'd you guess? With health care costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it. Solutions on the debt-free stage. Jim and Jenna are with us. Hey guys, how are you? Hey, uh, howdy, howdy. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. I love your tie-dyed be weird t-shirts. Best t-shirts of the week. That's impressive. <laughs> Very colorful. I needed some color here. That's uh, we're ready to go, man. Ha. See, I'm a, I'm a, I was born in the 70s, so no, I was born in the 60s. But yeah, but oh my gosh, still, oh, that's incredible. So, uh, where do you guys live? Uh, we live in Perrysburg, Ohio, just outside of Toledo, Wonderful. part of the state. Well, welcome to Nashville. And how much debt have you paid off? $731,000. That is sufficiently weird. Wow. <laughs> and how long did this take? Uh, a little over nine years. All right. And your range of income? Uh, we started at 125000 uh, It went up and down in between there, even a year of unemployment for me. Um, and we ended at just short of 130. So not much change between okay. the start and end. Cool. What do you all do for a living? So um, I work at Bowling Green State University. Mm-hmm. Go Falcons. Um, Jim and I met there. I'm no in the way. College of Education there. And our oldest two also attend there. So um I uh, gotta love that tuition waiver uh, yeah. part there. So um, I work in STEM education, um, teach some, and also work with teachers in in our area. Wow, home of my uh, hometown of my good friend Scott Hamilton. Yes. Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, and yep. uh, a famous runner from the '70s. You know what his name was? Uh, Dave Waddell. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I went to ice hockey camp there when I was 12. Nice. On that sheet of ice. No yeah. kidding. I, I doubt it's still there. It's probably mel- melted down, literally. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, wow. Same yeah. building, though. There. Yeah, I bet there. it is. I yeah. bet it is. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. Southern boy goes to the north and get my butt kicked by those northern boys <laughs> playing hockey, but that's what happened. But huh. very, very cool. Learned a lot. Learned a lot. Well, welcome, guys. Okay. I'm guessing, I'm going to surmise, nine years, 731,000, and be weird. T-shirts means you're paid off your house. We have paid off our house. Woo! That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. You we are, are officially we weird. Are done. <laughs> we are done. Bunch yeah. of weirdos. Yeah. I yep. love it. Congratulations. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you. Thank What's you. That? Thank you. What's the house worth? Uh, 250000 Way to go, guys. Mine. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Well, tell us about your Ramsey journey that started nine years ago. Oh, what happened? Uh, well, the journey started a lot longer than that, I would say, shortly after we were married. Um, I was introduced by my newly acquired father-in-law to this guy by the name of Dave Ramsey. <laughs> and he was trying to <laughs> give newly me all... acquired like father-in-law. He Very was official. giving me all sorts of advice, and I did what any other, you know, young 20-something-year-old thinks as they know it all. Mm-hmm. Um, completely paid no attention to what he was saying and right. went, up, went about our lives and sure. did what every newly married couple does does buy new cars, run mm-hmm. stuff up on credit cards, um, thought we were living life what we're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, then in the early 2000s, we bought some rental real estate. And that's uh-huh. where a lot of our debt came in. And mm-hmm. at a point, we owned five rental properties, all completely 100% leveraged, done sure. exactly how you weren't supposed to do it. Sure. And at the time, we thought we were creating future wealth. And in reality, what we created was a financial disaster. Mm. And when 2008, 9, and 10 came and the housing crisis took uh, all of our rental properties down to, mm-hmm. you know, 
nothing. Right. We struggled finding tenants. We struggled getting people to lease. Um, the values of them dropped significantly, and um, mm-hmm. we were at the end. And that was into 2012, 13, where we were two days away from filing bankruptcy. Wow. And about ready to throw in the towel completely and um, trying not to lose it here. You're good. (laughs) Uh, Just couldn't do it, couldn't let my kids down. And Mm -hmm. we were two days away. We had the Chapter 7 bankruptcy petition all filled out, ready to go. And they said, uh, we're just not going to do this. We're going to fight our way out. So my full-time job or our full-time job over the next couple of years became dealing with all the banks, brokers, uh, short sales, avoiding foreclosures, um, and made our way out um, from that and sold them all, um, took a significant hit and refinanced. Um, We did stupid things like you always say not to do. We borrowed money from our parents. So Mm -hmm. when we bought the properties, I borrowed money from both sets of parents to use towards the rental properties that we were buying. Wait, wait, wait. Your father-in-law who tried to get you to do Dave Ramsey (laughs) loaned you money to buy nothing down real estate? (laughs) So I might be really good at selling people and getting people to believe what I believe. Wow. um, I looked like the wrong person converted the wrong person. Well, it's funny. So he he passed away nine years ago, Mm. and that was part of it in 2012 when I saw what he left, he was a guy that um, drove the 1996 Jeep Cherokee his whole life. Mm -hmm. And I I started to pick up on that. When he passed, I realized the legacy that he had left Mm -hmm. for his wife and now his Mm -hmm. daughter and Mm -hmm. son. And that was one of the eye-opening moments for me. When I got to see behind the curtains, like, now I now I understand why you did what you did Mm -hmm. and that changed my life and he was an everyday millionaire he was Mm -hmm. an everyday millionaire that you would never know it he was a guy that drove the old car um, lived well below his means and you just didn't know it and now we do and so after we refinanced all of that debt back into one big snowball that's been the last six years um, that we've thrown everything we had at it and including our house Um, we had a car loan in there um, loans to the parents um, Mm -hmm. And it, it, it was significant. There was a lot of dark moments. but um, So you guys narrowly avoid bankruptcy. Mm-hmm. Father-in-law passes away, mm-hmm. and you guys go, never again. We never want to again. leave a different legacy for our family. That's exactly right. I, I looked at our kids, and they were probably our biggest cheerleaders. Without it, and without, without uh, any hesitation, they were our biggest cheerleaders, and they didn't know it because we just couldn't let them down. Mm. Um, I refused to let them down, and we weren't going to quit, and we were going to make our way out of it. And it, uh, and for a long time, this story I wanted to keep to myself. I, I was embarrassed by it. I didn't want anybody else to know. And then just in the last year or so, I'm thinking, maybe there's somebody else out there that is going through the same things. Maybe some people have done the same stupid things we did, and we can provide hope because wow. there was a lot of dark moments and you're looking at little kids and mm-hmm. our, all of our kids, Dave, they grew up with the uh, Financial Peace Junior envelopes. I mean, mm. for 15 years, they were the little kids running around with the yellow envelopes <laughs> and the Velcro thing, putting their money in, into it and saving it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and now I'm so proud of what they've done mm-hmm. and uh, they understand uh, what we've gone through now and they've been a big part of this journey. So We also had fun on the long road trips in the car um, <laughs> we, um, you know, when, uh, you could turn on the hotspot or the Wi-Fi, we wouldn't turn it on until, uh, we listened to a couple of Dave Ramsey episodes and made them listen and then tell us what they learned. So, uh, oh. dangled yeah. it like a carrot. Yeah. Right yes. Yeah, so you yeah. were a four letter word many times. Our youngest <laughs> could re- sing your s- opening theme song since I think he was about 10 years old. Um, it, they weren't really happy, uh, when we went on car rides a lot of times because they knew we had to listen to you. In fact, my <laughs> future son-in-law is out here with us as well today and the first time I really got to spend time with him I Wait a minute, you turned into that father-in-law now. <laughs> That's exactly right. So this is exactly this is right. This full circle. <laughs> it is. This is you're going to love you're this. You're now so, that guy. <laughs> right. So four years ago um, after they, shortly after they started dating I went to pick him up from school and it was a three hour trip back to Toledo and I made him listen to three hours of your show <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted to make sure that this dude knew what he was getting into and I am proud to say He's he, wearing one of the T-shirts. He's yeah. wearing one of the T-shirts. <laughs> he just bought his first car for cash, and my daughter is proudly wearing a debt-free diamond. Um, there we go. Get married Woo! next summer. There so we go. It is, uh, he is. He is. He's a keeper. We've decided we're going to yeah. keep him. <laughs> I'm. I'm, uh, I'm. I'm taking high odds on the over and under that Big Jim will be crying walking that one down the aisle because <laughs> Big Jim's a crier like me. Oh, yeah. 100%. That's exactly yeah. right. Without question. Yeah. yeah. Changing the legacy. I well, mean, did, literally in front of our eyes. Yeah. I didn't say. I mean, I wake up every day inspired to educate, mentor, and influence kids. So yeah. together we. Can 
can change the world. And um, we have generations of kids graduating from high school having no idea what they're doing, completely lost, yep. having yep. no idea how to find success, thinking that living beyond your means is the norm, mm -hmm. yep. having no understanding of personal financial management. And I'm, I'm blessed to lead an organization that um, believes we can create a world that kids will graduate from high school with a clear vision of future success. Cool. And Let me get you guys in to the shot before we do the debt free scream. I'm about to run out of time here. Come on. So the name of the kids are Brooklyn, Jimmy, Trevor, and the son-in-law is Lance. 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 All Lance. right, guys. Everybody's here with the shirts. This is awesome. <laughs> what a great story, you guys. You've been through hell, and you made uh, you made a lot of good stuff out of all that manure. I'm proud of you. Very well done. Jim and Jenna and the gang from Toledo, Ohio. Seven hundred thirty-one thousand paid off. In nine years making 125 to 130 count it down let's hear a debt free scream three, three two, two one, one. We're, we're debt free, debt -free. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well done you guys very 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 well done we appreciate you being with us what a great family this is the ramsey show like it's too soon to start talking about Christmas. I know Thanksgiving's still a couple of weeks away, but here's the deal. We know, and George talked about it on fine print this week, that the earlier you get started for Christmas with all the disruptions out there this year, the uh, less likely you are to mess up your Christmas budget. So a big reason for that, uh, re we're going ahead and get started because we're going to give away some cash. The Ramsey Cash Giveaway. Every every year we celebrate with our Ramsey Show listeners with our Ramsey Christmas Cash Giveaway. It's become a tradition. This year we're giving away $500 every week, and we've already started. And a grand prize of 5000 bucks. So given that, you're glad we started Christmas early, right? There you go. So no purchase necessary. Got to be 18. Of course, go to RamseySolutions.com to enter. Uh, and you can go ahead and get into, in on the giving, too. We've got all kinds of life-changing gifts for you and your family. Our famous $10 sale on our best-selling books. That means you can shop over 40 of these bestsellers and envelopes for $10 each or less. Uh, you can get books like number one bestseller, Total Money Makeover, uh, Christy Wright's 2020 Gold Planner also is a great gift. They are selling out fast. That's one that is actually uh, scarce. So don't forget the one-time use pres or do forget the one-time use presents and uh, give a gift of lifetime of hope. Give away some uh, Total Money Makeover books and some uh, Rachel Cruz's books and Christy Wright's books, Ken Coleman's books. So on ten dollars each at RamseySolutions.com. Open phones this hour. This is the Ramsey Show. The phone number is 888 825 Flory is in Cleveland, Ohio. Hi, Flory. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for taking my call. Um, I apologize. I'm, like, super nervous. Um, no problem. But, we never um, lost a patient. <laughs> I love that line. Um, my question is, I guess I'm, like, all over the place with my uh, finances, and I just kind of need to know where I should be. Um, make a long story short, um, I, I'm a hairdresser. I worked for a um, one of the top like salons in Cleveland, Ohio, on the west side. Um, I ended up leaving that position. The owner um, during the pandemic actually ended up um, died by suicide. So, oh. and then. Yeah, so kind of going through a lot. Um, the new owners ended up basically um, kind of making ch different changes. A lot of the stuff that I was taught, and I was there for almost 10 years. I've known them since I was like 14. Um, big mentor, um, you know, and I learned a lot, and I'm grateful for that. But um, things changed, so I went off on my own. I And then I um, started booth. Booth renting. Um, 
and I was on a non-compete for a year, and then now I'm back in the city that I used to work in, um, running my own studio with solo salons. I don't know if you're familiar with that too much, but um, I rent like a space, and I basically run my own business. Mm -hmm. So my question is, um, I'm trying to shop around for healthcare. I know I should have that, but I am 33 years old. I haven't really had the need to have it. Um, my financial advisor, my CPA is all telling me like, get yourself healthcare. And so my question is, do I basically not pay extra on my house or do I take that from like my contributing to my like uh, my Roth uh, IRA because uh, right now I'm uh, putting 500 a week uh, excuse me a month in my Roth um, I have no debt besides yeah okay George so and I'm just trying to like budget yeah, okay. and I don't know what my budget is I, I'm still trying to figure that out so you don't like, have health care right now at all Correct. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be your A1. I mean, you can jump on RamseySolutions.com. Yeah. We have insurance pros in Cleveland that can help you navigate this, help find the right option. And that's going to become a budget line item. And anything on top of that, if you, you don't have kids? No kids, single, yeah. Okay, Just so me. if you've got no debt, that fully funded emergency fund, you're investing 15% of your income into retirement, then you're going to start paying off that house. But it's going to be only after you've budgeted for all the things that are a part of your life, like health care. So any money left over, you can put it on, on the house. But yes, that's going to cut into the money that you would have put on the house. Hey, Flory. Yes. Today. Get, get on the dad. Yeah. Gun, get on Ramsey Solutions. Get one of the health insurance ELPs. Do this today. You want to know why so it's so important? Here's why it's so important. The number one cause of personal bankruptcy in America today is not credit cards. It's not student loans. <laughs> it's not overspending. It's a medical event with no stinking health insurance. Yes. So my other question is... Wait, you, know, you, you kept driving too fast, girl. Raise your right hand. Dave, I will go yeah. get health insurance today. Dave, I will go get health insurance right away today. And you're saying um, instead of like that money that I was like putting towards instead of like paying up because right now I'm paying more on my uh, mortgage. George, George just told yeah. you, you can't pay extra on your mortgage until you met your budget. And your budget okay. now includes health insurance because you raised your right hand and stuff. Yes. So how do I budget and like what should be my expenses versus my profit like for a small business is there like oh, you're a talking about the business side. like pardon so you're talking you're, we got to split the personal and, and the business side are you running these out of two different bank accounts so i have an llc um but i'm basically paying myself from my business yes okay because your but your budget for your personal life and your budget for your business are going to be two separate things so we've got to make sure that we've got those separated in different accounts and when it comes to expenses versus profits, Dave can speak to what that's going to look like as a business owner. Uh, but on your personal side, you've got to get that piece down first and make sure that you are paying yourself a living wage. Yeah, it's fairly simple. You're running a, a single chair operation. Y your income is you have very little expenses. You have the cost of the chair and you have some supplies. And so your income comes in. You pay the cost. You pay your expenses for operating the business. Everything else is profit. And you're probably bringing all that home. And that's fine. You do need to set aside a fourth of that for your taxes. You need to be withholding on yourself because you're an independent subcontractor, and you need to be filing a uh, you need to be filing your quarterly estimates once a quarter on that. And again, your financial advisor, or CPA, can probably hook you up with a good bookkeeper to do that, or check tax pro tax ELPs at RamseySolutionsWhat.com while you're there looking at the health insurance pros. So, Flory. Um, what I hear is somebody who's had a lot of um, emotional trauma through the pandemic with the non-compete, the loss of the job, the loss of your friend, the owner that mentored you, the new people coming in, jerking you around. Um, your story had some pain in it, and I understand that, and I'm with you on that. The trick when you go through pain is to come out of it very process and systems driven. Uh, John Deloney always says facts are your friends. And in talking to you, you're just kind of circling the airport all the time. 
That's why I hit you so hard to make you land the plane on the health insurance. You also need to land the plane on your taxes, land the plane on your budget. You need to get very very systematic and don't be circling the airport anymore. Land on some of these things and get very precise. It's very easy in the pain because the pain was as much of your story as the details were. And I understand that. I'm not against that. I, I've been there myself. I know how it feels. So, um, you know, but make yourself, the way these things, the way that the, all the uncertainty and the pain will go away is by putting these detailed processes in place. Yeah. And I want to do one more thing for you, Flory. Kelly's going to pick up and I'm going to gift you one year of Ramsey Plus. That membership is going to give you access to every dollar, which is going to be our budgeting tool that can help you put this stuff into place so that you can look at it. Like Dave said, fax your friends and go, oh, what are my expenses? What is my income? And you can go watch Financial Peace University. There's a great lesson on insurance in there that's going to tell you exactly what you need and more importantly what you don't need there's a lot of crappy tools out there crappy insurances so go jump on that watch the videos get plugged into every dollar and you're going to have a lot of confidence moving forward and keto you made me a promise you better follow through today you need to go get health insurance doesn't affect me at all but it's going to affect you you need to go get health insurance right now like you promised this is the Ramsey Show. Did you know you can listen to the Ramsey Show on your smart speaker? Just tell Alexa, Google Assistant, or Siri to play the Ramsey Show podcast. Check out all Ramsey Network shows on your smart speaker today. about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. You jump in. We'll talk about your life, your money. George Camel, Ramsey personality, host of The Fine Print, host of Entree Leadership, and co-host of this show today is my co-host. So check it out. George Camel and I will be here talking to you about your life and your money. It's common sense for your dollars and cents. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Tyler is with us in Springfield, Missouri. Hey, Tyler, how are you? Better than I deserve. How about you, Dave? Just the same, sir. What's up? Well, I have looked forward to this phone call for a very long time. But at the age of 24, me and my wife are officially in baby step seven. Wow! That's stinking and impressive, Hero. Way to go! It, it, it doesn't seem real. I'm not going to lie. What's the house worth? Uh, roughly 275 Gee, man. How did you do that at 24? I sacrificed a lot of time away from friends and family to... Uh, Work a pretty well-paying job. Oh, cool. What do you do? Uh, I'm a truck driver. Okay. So you've been like 80 hours a week, huh? Uh, well, no, oh, yeah. oh, no, wait a minute. That's not legal. <laughs> That's not legal. It wouldn't be that many a week. Well, yeah. A lot. With a partner, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I, I was calling since we are officially in baby step seven. Uh, am I crazy for... Uh, leaving my current job where I make roughly 110000 a year uh, to go work in the same field and take a pretty substantial pay cut, but be home every day of the week working 40 hours a week. What's the cut? Uh, I would be going to like 70000 a year. Okay. So a $40,000 cut on one hundred and ten. Yes. Okay. Well, because you guys are in Baby Step 7, it gives you options. And one of the reasons we tell people to live and give 
like no one else is so later they can live and give like no one else. And so what I love about your situation is you can afford to take the pay cut and it won't severely impact your financial life. Can you guys live off of your income? Absolutely, yeah. Does she work outside the home? She does. What's she make? Uh, about 35000 a year. Okay. So you're going to have $105,000 household income. You can live on that easy. you got no house payment, no nothing, no trouble. Okay. So that step is not, a, is not the end of the world. Okay. And yes, you probably should or could do that without you. Have you got babies? No babies yet. Okay. Not enough time for it. <laughs> Hadn't been home enough. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, the, uh, uh, yes, I would do that. Now I got to give you a huge caveat though. Okay. Because yeah. there's this, uh, it is, it has to be a temporary trade off. You're only 24 years old. I don't want you 34 driving local, making 70. Yeah. So I want to know what the next step is. I don't want to know today, but I mean, rhetorically, I want, I want to know what you're going to do. That's going to make you when you're 34, 150. So what career are you going to move into? Are you going to move into owning trucks? Are you going to, I don't know, but I'm not going to take you at 24 and that be the end of your career growth. Yeah. And you call that okay because of baby step seven. We're just going to kick back and take it easy. No, 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 no. You're only freaking 24. Okay. So let's go do yeah. something with our life now and use this step back as, a, okay, I can take some classes at night, get certifications in X, Y, or Z. Uh, I can do this or that on the weekend and get set up to move to the next level and start running a Ken Coleman program on your life where you move into a career that is really not only fulfilling. I mean, his new book, From Paycheck to Purpose, I'll send you a copy of it. Uh, but purpose and time with family does not always need to equate to less money. It can on the short term, but it doesn't have to in the long term. Okay? Yeah. So, yes, but not forever. Yes, but not for long is the answer to your question. Yes, I would do that. So I'll give you an example, okay? Out in 19... 19- 90, or no, 1994, I made 100, I was coming out of the bankruptcy, and I was doing real estate deals again, and I made $120,000 a year in 1994. I remember this specifically. I had written the book Financial Peace, and I was selling them out of the trunk of my car for $12. you got to sell a lot of those to get to hundred grand. okay? It's not a lot of money. And I was doing some speaking, and I was making like 250 bucks a pop doing speaking. I mean, I was not making it. And I started doing some coaching and I was making $150 for doing coaching. And I was on the radio and it paid nothing. And I was doing it for fun and to feed the coaching that wasn't paying much and the book sales that weren't paying much. But the financial piece materials obviously grew into everything we know today as Ramsey Solutions, right? And so I had this call and this pull on my life. So is it okay if I move from $120,000 a year in real estate to move to the call that God has on my life and the first year we budgeted out, we knew what we were going to make. We were going to make 60000 So I went from 120 to sixty. And then Sharon's walking around going, the financial piece is where? But, um, <laughs> uh, but the next year we made 100 and never looked back. And I obviously make a good deal more than that now. Uh, so <clears throat> the point being that that was not a permanent thing. Um, and it was, but it was a decision to take a step back so that we could take different steps forward. And we had that ability because like you, at that point we were debt free. Um, and so I could, I could say I can step away. Plus I knew I could step back into real estate if everything got real bad and get my income right back up. So you could go back on the road if you get yourself in a pinch, but we don't want, we don't want that to be our plan. I just want you to have a long-term career path that we take a step back in order to take 17 forward. Yeah. And if you love driving trucks and that's what you want to do, that's great. But have a plan for growth long term. And if you don't love driving trucks, this is a great time to sit back and go, what do I want to do? Like Dave said, follow the Ken Coleman path, read that book and figure out long term. He's 24. He's got the rest of his life. He's just getting started in his career. And he's a stud. Man. Yeah. Whatever really you do, you're going to crush it because you've got an incredible work ethic. Yeah. And just really focus and, and detail. Well done. Very, very well done. Hang on. I'll have Kelly pick up. We'll send you a copy of Ken's new bestseller uh, from Paycheck to purpose it just came out last week and um it talks about this but the thing i want to push back on for our audience george and i do this every time ken's on the air i wear it out because it drives me nuts 
this assumption that in order for your work to have meaning, you have to make less. Mm. This assumption that in order to have a more balanced life and have time with your family, that you have to make less. Um, so you either have the horrible, toxic job that pays a lot and you work too much and you never see your family, or we have this sweet little job that has meaning and family, but we make no money. How about C? None of the above. Not A, not B. C. The cool job that I'll has meaning and I make more money than either one of them. That's the one you want. I okay? like that option. But why do we have to assume that in order to have a better life that somehow we have to take less? There's this thing out there floating around that needs to be destroyed. We it's gotta killing bust me. the myth. It's killing me. So from paycheck to purpose, with a bigger paycheck. That's the book. This is the Ramsey That's Show. a great subtitle. <laughs> If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit. Whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. Coming into that time of year where money stress can really pile up. There's the list of Christmas presents to buy, the extra travel expenses, the bills, the payments, and the extra food. What if money was something you never had to worry about again? Not at Christmas or any other time. You know, it's actually possible. You just need a plan that works. And that's what you get when you go through Financial Peace University. You'll get the plan that has helped millions of people save for emergencies, get out of debt, become wealthy, be outrageously generous. It's a budgeting app, the premium version of every dollar. All of this happens when you're a Ramsey Plus member. And this is what you need to do. When you're not always worried about money, you get to live the life you really want. So this Christmas, give yourself a gift that will actually help you get there faster. Start a free trial of Ramsey Plus at Ramsey Solutions dot com slash Ramsey plus just jump on Ramsey solutions get to Ramsey plus get your free trial going and that'll get you into Financial Peace University that'll get you into every dollar and you can get ready for Christmas our question of the day comes from blinds.com they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee means even if you mismeasure or you pick the wrong color they'll remake your blinds for free you free samples free shipping and with the new promos they run every month you'll save even more use the promo code Ramsey to get your best possible deal. Today's question comes from Scott in Vermont. I know your company teaches to never use credit cards, but I'm having a hard time letting go of mine. The rewards that I earn are very beneficial to my family because we love to travel. My wife and I put all our utilities, groceries, and other expenses on our card and pay it off every month. What's the problem with doing this if we never pay any interest on the card? This is an age-old question, Dave. How many times have you answered this one? Uh, six or 8,000. Um, the, uh, uh, but the thing is you just did a great episode on, uh, the fine print about this. Yes. We did one on credit card rewards. Uh, and the it was numbers, I, the numbers are worse than I remembered. Yeah. The true cost of credit card rewards is what that episode was called. And we talked to an ex capital one, um, lady named Elena and she really unpacked the secrets that they're using to take your money. And a lot of people think, well, I'm not paying any interest. So what's the big deal, Dave? Yeah. I'm not paying any more than I would have if I paid on it with a debit card. 
Well, obviously that's not true. Okay, you're not paying any interest. But here's the here's what we know the stu- from the studies. Uh, Carnegie Mellon did a detailed study um, and uh, uh, using MRI, and, and they actually determined that when you use cash, it activates the pain centers of the brain. When you use plastic, nothing happens. No brain. But um, <laughs> but the uh, uh, but I mean, it's just like flatline, right? And so what it amounts to is, is you emotionally experience buying something and have a tendency to spend less when you spend cash. Visualize everybody listening right now, a $100 bill in your hand, leaving your hand. Oh, God! Right? Uh, and, and visualize you handing. Here's an interesting thing, too. Rachel Cruz brought up years ago. When you hand them the $100 bill, they don't give you it back. When you hand them your plastic, they give it back. Think about when you were a kid or something and you were trading. You know, you traded something. Or, or when you give, some, you give up something to get something. That's what you do when you pay for something with money. But when you give them your card, they give it back. You didn't lose anything. See how that feels psychologically? So it doesn't activate the pain centers of the brain, plus cash just does. And so here's what all the studies tell us. Depending on the area and the item you're shopping for, you will spend 12 to 18% more when using plastic than you will when using cash. When using a de- That's when using a credit card. When using a debit card, you'll even spend more. I use a debit card, but you'll spend more. I'll give you another example, okay? Uh, George, are you old enough to remember walking inside the store to pay for your gasoline. Oh, yeah. Okay, before you'd paid at the pump. Okay. Let me tell you what happened the last time people had to walk inside and pay for gasoline, and it doubled in price. There was almost a revolution. Mm. They were going to burn Washington, D.C. down. Now it goes from 250 to $5, and nobody notices because you just you just plug it in the thing, pay you for your gas, and walk away. The only thing you notice is you didn't didn't seem like I got that much gas. Oh, huh, that's weird. Okay, and you drive off. But if you walk into the store, the physical act of walking into the store and pay cash, and that registers that you, freaking gas is doubled. I'm gonna kill somebody. You know, you you start to have this experience. And so that, again, shows us that there's a behavior mechanism going on. You can take it one step further. Move away from plastic. Use to Apple Pay or Amazon Prime, where there's no friction at all. I mean, you don't have, you're not even touching something physically. You're just waving your, you know, you go to Home Depot and you wave your little phone across. And you just bought like a house of lumber, you know. But you just waved your phone. You didn't even, but you didn't emotionally experience it. No. Right? I just bought tools. I don't even know what they do. But I just waved my little phone across. There, I know? do it with my Apple Watch. Now. Oh, yeah. It's even worse. Oh, oh I, Here's what I do, Dave. You're going to love this. Starbucks drive through line. You get oh. the watch and you just hand it over like a tiny king and they kiss your wrist <laughs> as they scan it. <laughs> and you get, you get your $7 Tiny latte. king will have a mocha. Exactly. <laughs> And the dopamine kiss, hits. Kiss my kiss my wrist. You can't beat it. That's the Starbucks experience. That's why people go to feel like royalty. <laughs> well, I have noticed that with the Dunkin' Donuts app that I buy more donuts too. But That's yeah. how it works. <laughs> it's the same but, thing because you don't you don't have to pay for it. It's already paid for. It's built in. Yes. Chick Fil A. You can eat like half the dead gum restaurant and not even know you bought it. So it, the point being, guys, everybody falls for this stuff. I teach it and I catch myself falling for it. That's why Disney lets your room key. If you're staying on property work to buy things all through Disney. Smart. That way they can charge you $82 for a raincoat they paid 12 and a half cents for from China. Because Disney causes it to rain every afternoon on cue. But, um, you know, it's built right into the system. A $9 ice cream cone, right? And, and But your room key did it. And you don't even think anything about it. It's the happiest place on earth. <laughs> and then you go to check out and you're like, oh my God, I got to refinance the house. You know, it's like, so this is what's going on. So that that's the problem with his little theory. Yeah. Is he thinks he's the exception to all that because he got some airline miles. Here's the other thing. 78% of the airline miles are never redeemed. That That's 8 out of 10. That's sad. That's everybody. Okay. So if you do try to redeem them, Jupiter has to be aligned with Mars to get on the plane. I mean, you have to get the age of Aquarius to get everything to work out. There's all out. kinds of restrictions on those points. Exactly. And that they do points on purpose. If it was actual money, you'd know. But with points, you go, I got 48,000 points. Yeah. It That's has, amazing. I'm wealthy. And your point in the – that was a fabulous metaphor you used in the fine print episode. Oh, it's Chuck like E. Cheese. It's like going to Chuck E. Cheese. 
you know, you, you, you spend $83 getting all these tickets to trade it for a 12 and a half cent plastic ring, you know, but I got me a lot of tickets. That's Woo-hoo! your cash back. And it's all free, by the way. It's all yeah. free because it came with a pizza, you know. Uh, I yeah. tell people to give yourself cash back. Save up for your own vacation. That's what you can do when you're debt free and you make a plan for your money. I don't have to hope at the end of the year that we have enough points to take our family on a trip. You know, we stayed 10,000 plus millionaires and um 90 percent of them 89 percent of them uh, were first generation rich started with nothing and out of all 10,000 millionaires we interviewed not a single one said made all my money with my airline miles they didn't say that wow they didn't say you know i, I gamed the system i scammed old capital one because me i'm smarter than old capital one I mean, I'm smarter than I'm. I'm they, they spent more on that one commercial that ran one time than I made in a year, but I'm smarter than them. The arrogance of this is unbelievable. So the fact that you think you're whipping their butt, Scott, is kind of humorous. I'm sorry, son. You're not whipping their butt. They're whipping yours. This is how they built buildings taller than your house. You would love to just trade the furniture in their lobby for your home, you know, but no, you've paid for every bit of it. And I know you think you didn't fall for it, but you spent more. And the number of times during your life you fall off the wagon, don't pay it on time and accidentally slip into interest because a high percentage of credit card users eventually pay some interest. Yeah. um, And everyone thinks they're the exception. A little bit like a fishing story, you know. Like golfing story that one time when i hit the ball just right you know that one time i caught that big fish and you, know, you spent seven million dollars trying to get to the point you got that one fish you know and it's just like it's the same crap yeah so dude follow what millionaires do not what broke people with theories do and that's what people playing credit card points are they're broke people with theories and if that makes some of you mad out there good that's my spiritual gift This is The Ramsey Show. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech, and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000, all thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Brad and Julie are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey, Dave. Welcome. Where do you guys live? Uh, we're just outside of Atlanta, Georgia, and Cartersville. Yeah, welcome to Nashville. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. And all the way up here to do a debt-free scream. Yes, how much have you paid off? $676,997.39. Woo! <laughs> wow. How long did this take? Five years. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? Uh, started off at 75 uh, and ended at about 175. Wow. What do you guys do for a living? Well, well. so uh, <laughs> currently I just ended my 28-year uh, career with uh, one of the country's longest family-owned and operated wineries in California. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just finished my consulting with them and I'm going to reinvent myself. And uh, Julie? I am um, starting my own small business. I uh, create unique handbags. All right. That's fun. Good for you guys. Thank you. So you were living in Atlanta consulting Napa? Uh, not Napa, the Livermore Valley. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, so um, I was a director of operations. Mm-hmm. So I was passing the torch to the, the person who took over my position. Yeah. Plus helping out on some uh, IT type of things. So. Very cool. Yeah. Good for you. So uh, 677 over five years. You pay off your house? Yes. Hey! 
Two times. Whoa. Look at it, weird people. <laughs> the California <laughs> house and then uh, the uh, Cartersville house. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. So do you still own the California house? No. No, we do oh, not. We sold it. Okay. <laughs> we right. sold it, um, and uh, we, we came out. Very well. I can suspect that. Yes, sir. Yeah. Very well done, you guys. Okay, yeah. so what happened that put you on this journey five years ago? Well, um, in December of 2015, a week before Christmas, my dad passed away. Mm. And then the very next day, I found out I was losing my job. Oh, my gosh. So it was a dark time. Yeah. It was, it was a really dark time for Ouch. me. And, you know, I was freaking out. Um, you know, I, I realized, you know, sitting down and doing the bills, we're a thousand bucks short. Every month, thousand bucks. You know, too many bills. You know, I mean, yep. car payments, 401k loan, a HELOC, a this. I mean, a bed. I mean, just if, if we had a, <laughs> if we had the checklist of stupid from you, Dave, we ticked every box and added a few. Okay. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, you know, under miscellaneous, yeah. Yes. Miscellaneous, which is okay. refi. Mm -hmm. Roll the car loan into the refi. Oh yes. Thirty Two cars. year. Start over thirty year. Yes. Um, Kick the can. Kick the can. Yeah. But you know, and and at that point in life, didn't even realize there's a can. Didn't care, right? Yeah. yeah You're whatever. young enough. Um, I'll work my way through this. You can make the payments. Yeah. No, no biggie. We're still eating, right? Until you can't. Until, Until you, you can't. can't. And then you're yeah. a thousand bucks short. Then what'd you do? Well, then it was, you know, we realized like, oh my goodness, you know, it's just us. You know, we didn't get anything from my dad's estate. You know, this is us. No one to go to for help. I mean. And I'm a, I'm a huge talk radio guy, so mm -hmm. um, I couldn't tell you how many times I was driving home from work, hearing you on the radio, and then listening to two minutes and going to the next guy. channel because it's like, ah, <laughs> uh, what's this get rich quick guy? You know, there's no way. <laughs> Until I was in that position, and um, that's why we got to thank you, Dave. I mean, you, you literally Seriously, saved Dave. our life, and I, I'm hoping that we can touch somebody with a similar story as ours because. Yeah. I eventually stopped, and I yes. listened. And when I got home that night, I said, "We got to check this guy out." He came home and he's like, "Julie, I heard a guy on the radio." And I'm like, Tch. "Okay." Yeah. And he's like, "Yeah, I really think we should get out of debt." I'm like, Tch. "Okay, Mr. Amazon." <laughs> I, I, I'm, the, I'm the free spirit. I'm the free spirit. She's the nerd. I'm okay. the nerd. So. <laughs> and so yeah, so um, that was in February, so um, of 2016, and then we signed up for FPU. Yep. And I got to give a shout out to um, Kim, Kim and, and Garrett, Garrett mm -hmm. um, our coordinators. They're awesome. We mm -hmm. still talk. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we just went gazelle from there. Um, it was actually funny because I was like, I have no job. I'm, you know, I'm sitting in these FPU classes. I'm like, Dave, I'm not going to be able to pay this off, you know. Yeah. But you know, once we started going through the classes and working the snowball, whatever we could, you know, throw at it, it's like. Oh, wow, I think this is possible. And, and I must say, you know, anybody out there that's thinking about FPU or, you know, what is it? And if you have an opportunity to do it and we've gifted it before, yeah. do it. You're going to feel weird the first two weeks, undoubtedly. You're going to feel like Julie said, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? But you meet <laughs> a lot of, and I, I encourage you to go to the actual class. You can do it online or, you know, no, through DVDs. Go to the class. But go to the class, meet other people, realize you're not the only ones with these problems. Yeah. And actually, I hate to say it, but I felt better. We felt better coming out of the class by the third week because we realized we had a lot of debt, but we were nowhere near some of the other folks in the room. Mm -hmm. But uh, the other thing is, is, and this goes very, very true for single folks, you probably feel the worst because you feel like you have nobody, nobody. out there. But, you know, folks like us, you can all relate. You all have debt. Yes. And that's what's happening right now in this country. We got a huge problem. Mm -hmm. What's going on with the, you know, with the health care situation right now and all that, now is the most critical time for folks to shut the cards off Get mm -hmm. down, get your feet dirty, yep. and hammer it out, out because it can be done. It's not going to be fun. It's not like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> you know, I'm not, you know. I mean, who doesn't like to go get a $5 coffee and <laughs> treat it like royalty, right? you know? Yeah. Um, just my watch. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brad and Julie, I'm, yes, I'm looking at the numbers, and I'm just, like, in awe. How did yeah. you guys pay off 677 in five years making what you make? So, did you sell some stuff? What happened? Yeah. Well, yeah. Get to that in a second. But yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so our biggest one was our California house. That was like 188,000, and so we paid that off um, in September of 2020, and we're like, cool. And then we're like, let's move. 
Yep. And so then we decided we were originally looking at Tennessee. We settled on Georgia. And so we were like debt free for three months. And then we bought the Georgia house and moved across the country in January um, of 2021. And, um, Sold the California house and then paid off the Georgia house. Okay. Yes, and had yep. a nice chunk of change left over. And yeah, <laughs> getting back, but prior in California, before we, you know, actually paid that house off. Oh yeah, it was everything. It was comic books, musical instruments. My I sold Disney my, stuff. Sold my motorcycle. Wow. And what was cool was the dude that I sold my motorcycle to. I gave him a screaming deal. Um, he he came out the night before, looked at the bike, came back the next morning with cash and. Uh, he came into our house, and I think you have some of the photos there. We had a mortgage chain going down our hallway. Wow. And so this guy's filling out, we're <laughs> filling out the paperwork, and I'm like, you know, and I see his face. I go, you're wondering about the the links on the wall? He's all, yeah, what's what's up with that? So we told him, Dave Ramsey he goes, oh, I know, I I know about Dave Ramsey. I go, yeah. yeah. I go, you're helping us pay our debt off right now. <laughs> he goes, well, thanks. That's <laughs> awesome. And I go, you know, for me. I, I love selling my motorcycle to a guy who appreciates it. He actually brought his high school friend from nor uh, from Southern California up to Northern California, and they were going to go on a bike trip. And it was like, you know what? Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, it all works out. Yep. So, and now you're 100% debt free, and oh, you yeah. can buy a bike anytime you want. Exactly. Yep. So what's your first big thing you're going to do now that you're out of debt? <sighs> you know quit your job apparently well yeah, yeah. we already did that but yeah yeah. <laughs> we, yeah we did that you know but i mean i've never been happier i mean mm -hmm. our i think that's the thing dave it's like what's what's going to be your big thing it's um mm -hmm. i don't know you're looking at things differently right yeah, yeah. Um, well, dude, we got a copy of The Legacy Journey for you. That's awesome. the next chapter in your story <laughs> to move on and be baby steps millionaires. You're right on your way to do that. And we just got Ken Coleman's new book just in the mail perfect. a couple of days ago. So perfect. that's actually perfect. perfect timing for the <laughs> job thing. Excellent. So. All right. Well, let's count it down. Brad and Julie currently yes. of Atlanta, Georgia. 677000 yes. paid off in five years, making seventy-five to 175 Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three. Two, one, we're debt free! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> that dude's about to run through a wall. Hopefully not this glass. This is triple pain. He's not getting through it. But man, what an inspiring couple. Wow. They're on fire. Woo. Way to go, heroes. Proud of you guys. Very, very well done. That's how you live life, man. Get after it. Get it. Get it. This is The Ramsey Show. Ramsey Show, George Camel, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Kaziah is with us in Minneapolis. Hey, Kaziah, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Um, so I'm getting married in February, and um, I am living in an apartment right now with a couple of friends, but I'm looking for an apartment to move into before I get married so that I won't be as hectic during the wedding. Um, and there's just not a lot of apartments available in my area. Um, and I don't have a credit score, um, which is totally fine. But um, I also, me and my fiance both just got new jobs recently. So we also don't have any like proof of income to show the apartment. So we don't exactly know how to go about that. When did you get the jobs? Um, like three weeks ago. And they're looking for, like, multiple months. And I had jobs before, of course, but they're looking for someone that I'm, like, currently employed with. I think you've talked to two apartments. 
We did an interesting thing. We did an experiment here a while back. We called all the major apartment complexes in the Nashville area, like 30 of them. Two of them required a credit score. Oh, yeah. I I am totally, I called them, and they're totally fine with me not having a credit score. I agree with that. Um, But they just need a proof of income, which I have an income. I know. So just just get a letter from your employer. I'm gainfully employed. I just started a new job. I'm getting married. I mean, and, how many pay stubs do they need? Yeah, if she said like they want multiple years or something for a freaking apartment. That's silly. Now, you, I mean. You're not a freelancer, right? This is a salaried position? Um, I have a, like, a lot of my income is from babysitting and then from an internship and then from a preschool. So I have multiple streams of income, but my main one, my. So you don't have a pay stub check. except from the preschool. Yeah, except for the preschool. Yeah. So that that's your problem, yeah. Yeah, I think you're going to need to look around and find a landlord, find an apartment who's willing to look at all of the sources of income and say, hey, this is clearly something that you can afford. And uh, recently on the fine print we did this day, and we called all around the country. We called normal single-family homes with landlords. We called apartment complexes. And all of them just said, hey, you might need a little more deposit. So you're just going to need to explain your situation like a human, and they should be willing to work with you if you find the right place. Yeah. Occasionally you'll run into somebody who's just being a corporate geek and is following the Barney Fife letter of the law or something. But, but most of the time you can say, okay, look. Here, here, I can show you the budget. I can show you exactly what's going on. I can show you I've got these six jobs babysitting, and I'm a legitimate nanny. This is what I do. It's just independent subcontract, and I've got this this stub, pay stub. And your fiancé, if, uh, if he's signing on it as well, if he has a traditional pay stub, that'll be enough as well. But, um, yeah, you're going to run into uh, some people that aren't going to understand without a, cre- without a credit score, and you're going to run into some people that don't understand without uh, a, a traditional job. But, um, but you just have to search a little bit more. That's why I was challenging the number of times you've done this. And the other thing is this. Quit emailing people and texting them. Go sit down and look at them in the face, and that'll change, the, that'll change your outcome as well. Go and sit down. Like you seem like a very reasonable person. I'm sure you present well sitting in front of someone and say, "Here's the story. Here's the situation. I'm getting married. Here's the guy I'm getting married to. And would you all consider it in this situation? No, no, no. Yes. You know that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a few no's and you're going to get a yes. And you you can find someone to do this, but it is going to take more than just everybody does your deal because everybody doesn't do any deal. Yeah, and if you go there and you get a tour and you sit down face-to-face, I think it is a different situation than a cold email. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But you guys just jumped on the phone. Now, you were doing yeah. a credit score only. You weren't trying to say— We asked them about the whole situation. They said, well, you need to, we need to have proof of income, mm-hmm. and we need to make sure you're not a criminal. That mm-hmm. was it. And other than that, they said you might need a higher deposit, which you'll right. get back if you don't trash the place. Right. And that was it. And with, with her income being multiple streams and some of them being self-employed, like babysitting and so forth, she may have to put down a higher deposit. Yeah. In that situation, because the proof of income is what she's running into. But still, um, you know, I, I've got a bunch of rental property and we would rent to you, but you're going to have to make the case. It's not going to be just automatic like, you know, well, I'll make some money babysitting. Well, that's not. No, no. You got to show me what's going on. I got to know you can pay the freaking rent. And then our, I, I, you're not talking to me anyway, but our property team management team, that's what they would do. Bob's with us in Atlanta. Hey, Bob, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Hey, George. How you doing? Great, man. What's up? So I need a new car pretty badly. I've been driving a $500 car for the last five years, and it's getting to the point where everything's starting to go on, and it's got 280-some thousand miles on it. You do need a car. And I've been shopping around almost every day, and I'm having trouble finding a used car that seems like a good deal. A lot of these cars are seem like double what they should be. So I went out over the weekend and looked at a new car. And I know you say that you have to be a millionaire to buy a new car, but I just don't see the benefit right now in saving 10 grand to get a used car that's got, you know, 80, 90,000 miles on it, no warranty. So I don't know. I don't know if right now the situation warrants bending your rules. I just want to get your opinion on that. Well, where are you at financially? Do you have any debt? Zero. So I'm in baby step seven, and I probably got a net worth of like six hundred. And I why are you driving a five hundred dollar car? <laughs> well, my, it was it was a hand me down from my mom. I know, but leave it in the side yard and plant something in it. Oh my God, five hundred! You 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 got six hundred thousand dollars, dude. Go buy a car. Have you saved up for this car already? 
Yeah, I could. I, I'm, I'm not there yet. I'm probably like a month away from having cash for it. I looked at like a forty thousand dollar Jeep. And what's, your 60, 000, what's your sixty thousand? What's your six hundred thousand in? Uh, half of it is my house. A quarter of it's in a Roth IRA, and another quarter of it's between brokerage and savings. So you have the money in there to go write a check and buy a car. Go buy a ten, fifteen thousand dollar car. And this crap that all ten thousand dollar cars are worn out, or fifteen thousand dollar cars are worn out, dude. You've been driving a five hundred dollar car. This is exponentially a better vehicle than what you've been driving. Okay. You don't have to buy new. There's no. I mean. But you're saying he's saying, well, it's not a deal right now because of the car market. There's nothing that's a deal right now. New cars aren't a deal. A lot of new cars are going for over sticker for the first time in my lifetime, and I'm 61 years old. We've always been able to buy cars on new cars under sticker, and some of them are sticker plus. A lot of them are sticker plus right now because there's a shortage on them, and that's what's driving the used car market bonkers as well. Is there's a shortage, so I would just go get me some kind of car. My God, get out of a $500 car. And then you're going to move out of move again out of the car. It's not that big a thing. It's not that big a deal. So I was looking at a, 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 an Escalade the other day, and the brand new Escalades are bonkers. People have gone. It's a, an upgrade. They've got this like 36 inch screen in them. They're nuts. And uh, the guy at the dealerships, a friend of mine, he goes, "Yeah, I'll give it to you for sticker." And I'm like, "I ain't buying nothing for sticker." And he goes, well, dude, if you go up the street to the other Cadillac dealer, they're 20000 over sticker because you can't get these. Wow. And I'm like, Whew, unbelievable. So I got neither. That's what That's I did. That's the move right but, there. Um, that, that was a different move. But, yeah, you know, it worked. I mean, I'm not mad at him. It's just not the time for me to buy a car, obviously. Now, so, but, dude, dude you've got a $500 But a lot of people car. are in that boat. They're going, well, Dave, $500 car. You a new car, car is going to be way better. But if you get a $5,000 car, it's 10x what you're driving. I mean, my God. It's just, you know. Anything's an upgrade. Yeah. A so, bicycle might be an upgrade at so, this point. So move up a little. Get something reasonable and pay cash. H- here's the thing. Don't talk yourself into stupid because of the market's gone stupid. You know, just because everybody else has gone nuts doesn't mean you have to. And you can justify, well, because of the supply chain, I was forced. No, you weren't. You weren't forced to do nothing. You weren't forced to do anything. You may overpay for that used car, but not nearly as much as you will that new car. And it's going to go down in value faster. And uh, those new Jeeps are sweet, though. He there's, said he's there's looking at a nice new Jeep, that forty thousand dollar Jeep. That's what there, that's what there. did him in. He there. went. He made the mistake of going to look at a brand new Jeep. And you smell that leather, and they are they're good looking cars, man. They look great. I'm a car nut, but um. But, but he'll yeah. be a millionaire in no time. He'll get that Jeep. Yeah, yeah. Get, Not worried get, about yeah. it. Yeah. And why do we say be a millionaire before you buy a new car? Well, because depreciation is going to crush that thing like a bug, and a millionaire can take the hit. Tada. His name is George Campbell, ladies and gentlemen, and he has all the answers you could need. Good stuff. That's how it works. Good hour. Good hour, George. Well done. James and Kelly in the booth. I am Dave Ramsey, your host. This is The Ramsey Show, and we'll be back with you before you know it. Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Matt's with us in Indianapolis. Hey, Matt, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you, guys. God bless you for everything you do. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you. What's up? Got a question. I had a 24-year career at a previous employer, and I had a a company sponsor, I guess you'd say, pension plan. 
And when I left there, I was given uh, three amounts, um, what the life annuity might be worth at 55, 62, and 65. And I was wondering if there's any way to try to convert that, what it might be as a lump sum payment. Is there any kind of calculator or estimate? Um, Because that was not given to me at all. Okay, so you got the possibility of a monthly payment for life. Yes. You got the possibility of a lump sum at 55. Did they give you a lump sum today? No. I'll, I'll, I have the I have the numbers for what they will have they monthly. will they well probably not. Um, I would have to call the the company that actually handles the money, which is uh, like One America, mm-hmm. and whether they would talk to me or not, I don't know. Well, I guess but, my question is: Is that an option to take a lump sum today? Not today. Um, I'm 53, so we're just trying to do some planning. Okay, it so 55 is, the soon, 55 is the soonest. Yes, sir. Okay, all right. All right, here's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to take it at 55. But sure. I'll back in and, and help you with the answer to your question as well. What you're looking okay. for is a discounted cash flow analysis or a net present value of the money, okay? And so... Uh, when you back that out and you run the calculations with a financial calculator, you're going to find this annuity paying in the 5 to 7% range. Okay. That's what you're going to find. Okay. And so were you to take the lump sum at 55 and roll it into an IRA with no taxes involved, because it's pre-tax, I assume, right? It's a pension. Yeah, so, it's a pension. Yes, it's a pension. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so you'll get taxed on it if you pulled it out. We're not going to pull it out. We're going to roll it to an IRA. That way there's zero taxes on it. All right. Now, when you do that, if you rolled it into a good growth series of good growth stock mutual funds, you'd make 10 to 12%. And you're going to find that produces much more income than the annuity would produce. Now, the annuity for life is probably calculated out with you dying uh, 78 years old, maybe 80, depending on which actuarial tables they're using. And that's how they run the numbers out. Uh, And so, but here's the here's the hook to the whole thing, the, the deal breaker. When you die with the pension, regardless of which option you take, your estate will get precisely zero. Yes. When you die with having rolled this over to an IRA, 100% of the money will be in your estate. Yeah, that's... That's the route I definitely want to go. Yeah. So that, uh, not only are you beating 12 or 10% over 7%, but you're also beating zero over, at death, zero over. So you're better off alive, better off dead to take it. But it's okay to run the calculation out, and a SmartVestor Pro can help you do that and sit down. It's not something, it's a little too cumbersome to do on the radio, but I could sure. do it. I could take my financial calculator out of the, out of the drawer over here and do it for you but but it's a it's a series of numbers and you had you need to sit down with somebody take about five minutes to do it and you can figure out then what the actual interest rate is that they're paying based on the different numbers that they're giving you there's a formula to put the stream in and you can make an assumption of 80 or assumption of 78 and there's a formula for putting the lump sum in there's a po- formula you said there's another number at 65 and when you put those three numbers in they're all going to cough out five to seven percent probably six and a half, something like that. That's what you're going to find. That's because pensions are regulated very strictly and they really are not going to ever produce much more than that for that reason. Yeah, that's interesting. Just doing the math on that and saying, hey, if I took this out into the IRA, let it grow, it could do a whole lot better than taking those payments or waiting any longer. Well, and you you can turn around and take the payments at 59 and a half. You can't take them at 55. Um, but, um, but the pension is one of the reasons that almost all mainstream companies have done away with pensions. They're almost all gone. Everybody's pretty much 401k. Now, you still do find pensions in unions and huge companies and certainly in government. Find them everywhere in those situations. But, I mean, most traditional corporations in America today don't have a pension anymore because it's just not a good deal. And it's cumbersome. It's crud to manage it from the employer standpoint. It's a disaster. It's really hard. But um, the uh, but but so the big thing is just when you die, you get nothing and versus when you die, you get something. Your, your heirs get something. Yeah, that alone is good reason to take That's, it and invest it as soon as possible. You know, you talk, you know, it's a hundred thousand bucks, fifty thousand bucks, two hundred thousand bucks, whatever it is. It just 
evaporates. You know, and so that that pretty much destroys the math. Even if the, the numbers were reversed, if you only made seven moving it and you would have got 12 leaving it, you still got to think about zero at death and it starts to offset the numbers. So, you know, you just still, still got to do the critical thinking on it, but it's OK to do the math. And it sounds like he wants to. So sit down with the Smart Vista Pro. They can pull out a cal- financial calculator and just a few minutes back into those numbers, I could do it, but it, I'm not going to do it on the air. I used to do that on the air, and it drives me nuts because I get too ADD. You punch one I'm, number wrong. Well, I'm trying to talk, and then I hit it in, and it just doesn't work. So, All right. So generally, folks, if you have a pension lump sum option, take it and roll it to an IRA in good growth stock mutual funds with your SmartVestor Pro because when you die, it doesn't evaporate that way. That's your general answer. Now, there may be some weird exception somewhere, so it's always good to think about it, always good to learn about it. Uh, But in general, that's some fairly simple reasoning that will get you to that answer. Ryan is with us in Johnson City, Tennessee. Hey, Ryan, what's up? Ryan, George, it's great to talk to you guys. You too, sir. Um. I've got a, uh, I don't know, serious life question. Quick backstory, Dave. I dropped out of school when I was 17 years old, and I've worked at my hind end off the last eight years to get to where I am today. Um, but you're 25. My father-in-law, yes, sir. Okay. Um, and I've been a heavy duty diesel mechanic ever mm-hmm. since. I actually run a shop now, um, and uh, or a major company, um, and. My father-in-law has approached me to take over his construction business. Now, I'm not – I also own a home uh, investment company where we buy, fix, and resell houses. I'm currently working on two houses. All all this is done with cash, no borrowed money. Um, And I just – I don't know. I've worked really hard to get to this point. I'm nervous. (laughs) I I don't know what kind of decision, you know, what kind of – you know. I understand. I guess you could say. (laughs) That's a very, very good question. I'm bumping up on a commercial break here, so we're going to go make a little money so we can stay on there. And uh, we'll come back here and be sure we answer your question a little more thoroughly. I don't want to do it in 10 seconds. So hang on, Ryan. Be back with you. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're not using Pure Talk for your wireless, you're paying too much. Pure Talk gives you the same great 5G coverage on the same 5G network as one of the big guys for half the cost. The average family saves over $800 a year. Go to puretalk.com and choose the affordable plan that's right for you. With their 30-day risk-free guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Ramsey personality is my co-host today. We're talking with Ryan in Johnson City, Tennessee. Started out at 17 years old as a diesel mechanic. Now he runs the shop, doing really well. His father-in-law comes, by the way, he's doing some uh, fixes and flips on some houses. Father-in-law comes along and says he owns a construction company, and uh, Ryan, we want you to come over here and run it. And that's about how far we got in the discussion. Is that a fair summary of what you told me so far, sir? Yes, sir, Dave. That's accurate. Okay, cool. So what is the uh, what's what's your what are you gonna do? <laughs> I don't. Know, that's kind of kind of you know wanting some advice from you guys today. Uh, you know, start off. You know, he what it is is he's looking to in the next five to six years he's looking to to pass it on and be you know he's ready to retire. He's he's worked he's worked this business for thirty plus years. Um, the last five or ten years, he's just he's got older in his age, and he's not been as engaged as he used to be. But I mean, he does painting and trim work, and you know, really high end houses. It's not you know, 
regular mom and pop type houses. So it's it's specific, it's specific work, and it's highly you know it's in high demand for the the type of work that he does. Um, and he just is he, he physically is he you know, physically still doing the work, or he has people working for him that does it. Um, he he goes to the job site. Yeah, he 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 has multiple people. Where he's got a paint crew and a, uh, a carpenter crew, but they're doing specific type of like yeah, trim, they're, they're trim, trim work, paint work. Yeah, they're doing yeah. craftsman. They're doing high end stuff. It's not slap it on there. But he's not swinging yeah. a hammer or a paintbrush anymore. He still goes to job sites, but you know he works a farm. He'll you know he may go to job sites and help guys if they need help. But he he's not required to be there like you know like he used to be you know mm-hmm. years ago building the business and this and that. Uh, right. He don't he's got he actually let the business get a little smaller than it used to be. He used to have about sixty or seventy employees, and now he's he's around. He's in the twenties, uh, but like I said, last five or ten years he hadn't really wanted to work. Okay, so what's the profit work. on the business? Um, I don't know. It's okay. He, we haven't sat down and talked those numbers, but basically, he can he can replace my income as uh, you know, as far as what I'm making here today. I'm putting in, but long term, yeah. you're doing this to get your income up. Yes, yes. Okay, and so I want to know what is, that is. I mean, replace my income. What do you make now? Um, I make between just depends on how hard I you know want to work between eighty five and ninety. Uh, you know, uh, depend. Now I'm I'm still an hourly foreman, so I run. You know, I still run a shop, but I, you know, if I want to work extra overtime, I can get. You know, I can get into the high nineties. Just depends on how hard, how hard, and how much I want to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's just from my current job. That don't count my. You know, the company that I've got where we buy and sell houses. Uh, I think I made like between foreman and that last year. I made like one thirty five ish or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. What are the uh, what are the terms of you taking over the business? Basically, um, he wants me to to get in there and learn this high end trade. Um, I would be a part. I would be an owner from day one, basically. Um, so you know, he's always just he would go work the job sites and he would get to pay for pay for you know the what he would earn that week that's all he'd pay himself and the rest of the money that all the other carpenters would work and that he would make on top of what him be on the job site he would just put in the business account and then he would pay himself you know quarterly or once a year just a bonus or something and i mean he's he's got a very high net worth uh well over three million dollars so I mean, he's done he's so is done he gonna well he's gonna give business. you this business at the end of the story at the end of the store, end of the day, he wants me to run it. He wants me to get he's at this business. He wants. No, no you he wants running it for him is different than him giving it to you. Which is it? It's it's he it's you know, he's going to give it to me at the end of the day, but he just wants me to learn the trade and I understand. start running all this. I understand. I'm saying, I said at the end of the story. So, if you're 25. Yeah. When you're 30, this will be yours. Yes, but yes. Okay. Now, when you're 50, what do you want to be doing with your life? Diesel mechanic, or running high end trade? Uh, I want to work for myself, Dave. Um, uh, you know that's not the answer. I'm, you work for yourself doing anything. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You could be a diesel mechanic uh, for yourself and not run a shop for yourself. Uh, you could be a high end trade for yourself. What do you want to be doing every morning when you get up Monday morning? You're going to work. Have a smile on your face, like I did this morning. Yes, sir. I've been doing uh, this well, thirty years, and I still like it. At the end of the day, Dave, I could be doing either one of these jobs and be happy at the end of the day. Um, Bull crap. I'm limited. I'm, I am I love them both. No, Dave. That's, listen, that's, you, you, know, you, I, you, you are good with your hands, and you are such a freaking hard worker that you are you are uh-huh. content with anything that is hard work that you can make a living. And I want you to rise up above that and get into your head, not just your hands, and go, What's going to make me smile when this is big? And you don't have to answer me, but you got to answer you before you make this decision. Yes, I think you're going to go to work for him and the hand that take this over. But I want you to be really yes. sure that you're not just doing it just because it's there. Because you'll be miserable. Yes, don't be miserable. And look back and go, I live my father-in-law's dream. Yes, sir. Ryan's dream. That's what we're after here. 
And it's okay to do that. I mean, my kids are involved in this business. They're taking it over. They're not going to be miserable. We've run, gone through a very detailed process to make sure it's God's call on their life for them to be here or don't be here because nothing's worse than family business when somebody don't want to be there. Yes, sir. I, I, I tell you what, Dave, I, I won't do anything that makes me miserable. I, I, yeah. I want to come home and, you know, be with my family and yep. enjoy, enjoy the time I'm with my family. So I want and so, when you, when uh, you re- enjoy you, what you do. You, I ain't you aren't doing those real estate deals just for money. You enjoy that project based, get stuff done, take something and transform it and put it back out in the marketplace looking better than it did and make some money on it. You enjoy that, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. I love, you're a, I love the you're a guy who fixes it. things. You're a guy who fixes yes, things. So I think you're going to end yes, up doing this, but I want you to get down inside your heart, talk with your wife. And then the other thing is with your father-in-law, don't assume squat. This needs to all be written down. Yes, sir. That's, that's, what, that's one thing he said. He said we would get with his, his order. Yeah, like right on this end. date, if I am competent and I have learned the trade, you will turn it over to me. Yes, sir. That needs to be in writing, okay? So hang on. I'm going to have Kelly pick up. Ken Coleman's book, From Paycheck to Purpose, will be helpful to you. But more importantly, Kelly, give him this career assessment that we've got now. And it is, Ryan, it's just magical. It'll take you about 15 minutes to take it, and it, you will have insights into yourself. You can go over it with your, the answers with your spouse, you and your wife. Look it over. You could even go over it with your father-in-law. It sounds like he's a great guy. And just talk it through and go, what does this the answers to this assessment lead me to this deal. Yeah, and it's a very interesting situation where he can do anything, and he's a hardworking guy, but what does he love to do? Because that's what I'm looking at is you could take over the business and go, all right, this is fun, but when you have options, which he does right now, I don't want him to feel obligated to step into family business and then step into a nightmare down the road. Exactly, and it's um, both of these jobs are activating the same stuff inside of him that makes him – you know, he does stuff with his hands. He's a fixer. He's a guy who fixes stuff. So that, that and that's all perfect for yeah. both of these. That's what, one of the reasons he's saying that. But I want him to push past that. And uh, Ken's this this new book that is is, is really incredible. Yeah. Uh, to get really clear on what it is you're going to do. That's st- stage one of his seven stages to get to move from paycheck to purpose. And that get clear assessment that you're talking about, that purpose statement that it gives you is so it gives you such clarity. And you go, oh, want to run it through this filter? Nope. The trade's not going to do it. Yep. I need to be a diesel mechanic. I need to be in real estate. Yep. Yep. And I, um, yeah. And, and you do move through the process. I talked about this with Ken's group the other night when we did that live stream for his book. You do move from the process of just having a job to make a living and feed your kids, eat, keep the lights on, and then you move to career. And then the best of the best is when you get to move from career to calling. When you move into your calling. That's where the joy is. That's where there's soul the deep work. in your work. Yeah. And you and I are both experiencing that personally. Yeah. So, good stuff. This is The Ramsey Show. personality is my co-host today on the debt free stage in the lobby of ramsey solutions james and emily are with us hey guys how are you hello hey we're welcome. good welcome welcome where do you guys live uh we're in kennesaw georgia just north of atlanta awesome welcome to nashville good to have you second atlanta debt free screamer today very good how much debt have you guys paid off 
Uh, just over 50000 Awesome. And how long did that take you? 17 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? Uh, 60000 to 74000 Very cool. Good for you. What do you guys do for a living? So I um, now am a stay-at-home mom Mm because we had a baby during that time. Yay. Um, And I work part-time at a treatment center to help um, substance abuse clients. Ah, Okay. And that was your career before? It was, yeah. I was Mm -hmm. full-time. I I just kind of took a step back to take care of our baby. Absolutely. Cool. And what about you, James? What do you do? I run a lawn care business in the Kennesaw area. Awesome. Very cool. What kind of debt was your 50000 my student loans. <laughs> um, it was my student loans. Uh, my car mm-hmm. was a good bit of it. And then... A uh, credit card, too. Yeah. No mowing equipment? No. <laughs> he runs no. a debt-free business because of you. I yeah. love it. That's awesome. Yeah. So good. Yeah, yeah, there's pictures of that, too, by the way. Yeah, I see them. They're showing up here on YouTube. Very <laughs> good. good. It mows better when that's, it's that's, debt-free. That's, a, that's some kind of pickup you got there, that's dude. That's the humble beginnings. That's the beginnings he of the whole process. He has a truck now. <laughs> okay. He's got a real truck now. He's pulled it with a Honda Accord before. <laughs> it's good. I love it. Well done, dude. I like it. That's cool. And so, uh, debt-free dude marries... Emily, when? How long have y'all been married? Just over a year. It was August ah. of 2020 we got married. Okay. So before you even got married, you started on this idea of getting out of debt and then completed it after marriage and then had a baby. Yep. He, uh, y'all been busy. He uh, was the initiator of the whole situation. I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> how, how did that go down? Tell us that story. So I had proposed to her uh, early in, I guess it was 2019. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of at a time where I I didn't really have a plan or goals with money. I didn't have, like, I was just, you know, flying through the wind with everything. And, you know, I came across your stuff from our friends. And to have, like, a straightforward, direct, like, follow these instructions things was, was super easy for me to get behind. And I really liked that a lot. So, you know, we discussed it together that this is kind of what we wanted to do for our life and how we wanted to live our life and to grow and to prosper. And then... uh So we set the goal and then, you know, we found out we were pregnant with Lily not long after we got married. And so uh, that kind of made things real and made things sort of like, it kind of gave the timeline. Like I was really, I personally was sort of pushy with it. I was like, I really want to try to get this done before she comes um, if we can so that we can come home and not have to worry about that. Um, But but we did. We, as soon as she was born and home, safe and healthy as well as me, Mm -hmm. um, we paid it all off. um, You had the money saved and you chunked it in. That's perfect. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. Um, During that time, though, we were able to cash flow our wedding, Mm -hmm. um, pay for an ACL surgery for one of our dogs, and to pay cash for her birth. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. And he's building this lawn care business with cash the whole time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was doing that, um, and I worked three jobs up until um, I gave birth. Wow. Man, you guys have been after it for 17 months. Mm-hmm. So what was the hardest sacrifice along the way that you guys had to make? Uh I don't know sacrifice. I was really, I really like eating out. Um, but I would say the hardest part was probably when we came to the grips. We, you know, we we did financial peace as kind of our premarital thing. Um, we we went through the course online at the time because it was COVID. Um, but we when it when I when I had to personally accept that our bank accounts were going to be joined, that was very difficult because I couldn't do what I wanted to do with my money anymore. It was like you know I had a an, a built-in accountability partner, and it was kind of that was the most difficult part to me, I think. Wow. So along the journey, you guys had to combine finances, and you were going, I don't know how much I like this, <laughs> but now you see the benefits of it when you get on the same page. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. How's it feel now to be free? I mean, that financial peace is the perfect way to describe it. You yeah. know, it's like, it's kind of, I feel normal. Like, this is kind of, it's hard to describe. Like, I felt weighed down before and stressed out a lot. And, you know, I'm like sort of a naturally high anxiety person as it is. And so to not have to worry about that is just huge. I mean, it's huge. It really is just like, uh, that sigh of relief. Like, it's like this part's taken care of, you know, like we're okay. And we have a goal and a plan now. Like we have a direction that we're going in financially. And like I really, you know, want to do that for our daughter and for our family and our, our kids' kids. So, You guys are heroes. You're so fun. You changed everything for her. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's she's got a great future because of you two, because of the way you've taken control of your life. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it was tough. Um, I'm a spender, I would say. Um, 
and it was difficult, but I think having him was super important because at times I wanted to be weak, he was strong. And at times he wanted to be weak, like I was strong. And I was like, this is why we're doing it. Like, we need to remember that. And I took out a ton of student loans not knowing what it was going to do. And now my daughter is never going to do that. Amen. Amen. Well done. Yeah, that's that's the family tree that's changed right there. It's not the 50000 It's what happened in both your hearts and in your marriage and everything else during that time. And that's worth a, a 5 or $10 million. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- That's what it'll result in, as young as you guys are. How old are you two? Um, I'm 27. Mm-hmm. I'll be 35 in December. Okay. Wow. Very cool. Good for you guys. Yeah. The future's bright, baby. Woo. Future's bright. Very, very, very well done. And what's your baby's name? Um, her name's Lillian. Lillian. Okay. And she's visiting off to the side, I understand. She is, yeah. Okay. She she might freak out. She's a little, <laughs> little, little camera shy at her age. Okay. That's cool. No troubles. No troubles. All good. All good. Well done, you guys. Who are your biggest cheerleaders outside the two of you? I would say our friends were kind of cheering us on along the way. A lot of them, uh, they didn't necessarily, friends and family uh, were cheering us on along the way. They, they didn't necessarily buy into what we were doing uh, because it's, you know, not a normal thing in the eyes of society, but they, they cheer us on. Yeah. Yeah. They like everyone. You're, wanted you're us weird, to but I love you. So yeah. yeah, yeah. You go. Good for you. Like, you guys are doing yeah. good. Yeah. That's good. I like it. Well, you never know. Some of them may come along now that you're having this sense of peace that they don't have. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so good stuff. So what would you guys say to the couple out there who's about to combine the finances or getting married? They've got a pile of debt and they're a little bit anxious about all this stuff. Um, I would say, I mean, you said it really well, George, when you said that, like, it kind of, it gets us on the same page because otherwise, even if we both have the same goal but aren't combined in what we're doing, it's just still off a little. It's like not, you're not really there. You're not walking hand in hand on the same path. You're kind of walking two separate paths in a similar direction. And it's like just so much stronger. It's like getting in the car and driving down the highway rather than wandering, Mm. you know. It's like so much better. For me, it was trust. Like, I took that extra leap to trusting him because I told him straight up, I was like, I kind of want a separate savings account just in case. Like, Mm. what if? Um, And his exact words were, you're setting us up for failure and for divorce. And, um, (laughs) yeah, it was... uh, And fighting words. (laughs) That was pre... drop. That was before being married. Um, So we still got married. But (laughs) he he was right. Like, I don't need an escape route because we're in this together. Like we're in this together, and I oh, had to trust that's him. Beautiful, oh, beautifully said. That's strong. I don't need an escape route because we're in it together. That's that right there is tweetable. I'll take it. Back <laughs> back when people that were real were on Twitter. But yeah, oh my gosh, way to go, guys. I'm so proud of you. Got a copy of the Legacy Journey for you. That is the next chapter in your story for sure. That's where you're going next, and on to baby steps, millionaires before you know it. And I can't wait to hear from you when that part of your story occurs as well. Really well done. Copy the Total Money Makeover for you to give away for one of those doubter friends, and maybe you'll bring them along on the journey. All right, it's James and Emily and Lillian from Marietta, Georgia. $50,000 paid off in 17 months, making 60 to 74. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. You ready? Count. One, two, three. We're We're debt-free! how you do it ladies and gentlemen ha, ha, ha. this is the ramsey show today James 112 blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him Joe Vitale said a goal should scare you a little and excite you a lot that's the truth 
So let me ask you a question. When you think of a millionaire, what kind of job do you picture them having? Some kind of high-powered executive position, CEO, VP? Well, here's the thing. Only 15% of, a mil- of millionaires actually have jobs like that. The reality is the top five careers for millionaires in America are engineer, accountant, teacher, manager, and attorney. And that's just one of the surprising things our team found when we conducted the largest study of millionaires ever done. They talked to 10,000 millionaires about who they are and how they achieved that goal. Our study also made it clear that to become a millionaire, you've got to invest wisely. And a big part of that is getting good investing advice. The vast majority of millionaires use an investment advisor to teach them, and then they make their own decisions. Our team recommends trustworthy, vetted investing pros from all over the country. We call them SmartVestor Pros. To get in touch with a SmartVestor Pro in your area, go to RamseySolutions.com slash SmartVestor and start building wealth today. That's RamseySolutions.com slash SmartVestor. George Camel is my co-host today. Alex is with us in Sacramento. Hi, Alex. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thanks for um, answering. <laughs> Sure. How can we help? Um, I have a question about cancer insurance. And um, so I know you don't recommend cancer insurance, but I was wondering if that still applies um, in my situation. So I have a genetic mutation where my chances of getting breast cancer increased to about 70%. And I scheduled the appointment to meet with my insurance company. And um, I'm about to cancel it, but I want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. Okay. So what is your can- what kind of cancer insurance do you have? Um, it's cancer insurance offered through my workplace. Um, basically, if I get like some kind of service that's related to cancer, um, like a mammogram, then I'll get like a little check like a good job for doing that and then if i do get cancer then i'll get a percentage of what i would have gotten um if i were working okay so it covers your income if you're off from work due to Mm -hmm. cancer yeah but i have to have a cancer diagnosis yeah i know i understand that and and, uh, but mammograms are free with almost every uh, health insurance plan out there now right Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so really, this is basically disability insurance in the event of cancer only. Do you have long-term disability insurance? Yes, I just signed up, so now I do. Good. Do you have uh, an emergency fund? Um, only of a thousand. I'm still on baby step two. Okay. And how much does your cancer insurance cost? Um, about thirty bucks a month. Okay. And what does it pay if you get cancer? Seventy percent of your income, right? Yes. For how many months? Oh, I'm not sure. Okay. Be good to know. Be good to know how long before it starts, too, after a cancer diagnosis. Does it start six months after or six days after? That's important, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so here's the thing. If you have three to six months of expenses, I would drop it even in your situation. It's a gimmick is what it is. They don't sell heart attack insurance. They just sell cancer insurance. And as many people die of heart attack as they do cancer. But they just, cancer is so scary and it's such a thing. And if you've ever had a loved one, and most of us have, that have had cancer, then it just, you know, it just devastates you emotionally. And so it's, you're, you're so susceptible to that. So I would keep it for now. But I would not keep it long term because it is really not a good product. But for right now, you know, 30 bucks a month is covering you because you only got $1,000. But once you have three to six months of expenses set aside and long term disability insurance in place, you've got no need for it. Yeah, you talk about this in Financial Peace University in that insurance lesson. There's so many different types out there and riders you can add, and a lot of them are just gimmicks. And they're, they're covered through your normal insurance. They're cur- covered through long-term disability. So you really got to look at the fine print, no pun intended, to figure out what you actually need. And, Alex, I do want you to do just exactly that. George is right. Because you don't know what you're getting for your 30 bucks. And here's the rule in insurance. If it doesn't cost much, there's a reason the fact that it's only 30 bucks, $360 a year, 
there's a reason because it doesn't cover much. So it either has a, a, an elimination period, meaning it starts late, or it's a short payout. It doesn't pay out for very long. Um, and they know that on average, covering a young woman of your age, that that's where you are. So uh, I'd leave it in place for today, but I want to learn what it actually covers. And th- then I do want to get your emergency fund in place, the fully funded one, and then drop it at that point. Just because you in particular are worried about this because of this genetic situation. Uh, for most people, I just drop it, period, uh, just because it really doesn't cover much when you get down into it. It just doesn't. There's not much benefit for the cost. That's what it comes down to. So good question. Thank you for joining us. Eli's in Clarksville. Hey, Eli, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you. How can we help? So I'm a sergeant in the Army right now, and I'm planning to get out June in uh June 18th of this coming year, and I have about 60 days of leave before I do get out. And, like, the Army will still pay me for, like, that that time. But I'm not sure exactly what I want to do when I get out. Because, like, I, there's all kinds of different options, and I was just hoping that you could, I don't know, like, uh, help me, like, figure out, like, how long of, like, a window I really have to, like, figure out what I need to do. Eli, how old are you? I'm 22, and I turned 23 in February. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your service and sacrifice, first of all. Thank you. So when it comes to what you want to do, you've this, this is all you've known is being in the military, right? Yes, sir. So what you got to do is figure out, what do I want to do for the rest of my life as a 22, 23-year-old? And we've been talking about, you know, Ken's book, From Paycheck to Purpose. And uh, I want to gift you that book, and I want to also gift you that Get Clear assessment that's going to help walk through what are you really wired to do? Because there's a lot of things you could do. Like you're saying, I've got a lot of options. Is there anything that, that comes to mind when you think, hey, man, if I could get out and do anything, here's what I would love to do with my life, with my work? So, I mean, I'm a really big fan of, like, helping other people out and like uh doing kind of like a or like doing like a supervisor type position like so you want to lead people i know i've thought I've, I've thought a lot about opening my own business though but yeah i'm kind of it, it i don't know i need to learn a whole lot more about that before i would be able to like move anywhere in that direction agreed Agreed. I agree with that. You got time to I, I don't think that's your first step. I think your first step is find something to move into and begin to find your way toward something that gives you joy, where you can serve folks and you can get some sense of soul. So George is exactly right. We'll send you the Get Clear assessment. Take that. It's our gift to you to say thanks for your service. And we'll send you a copy of Ken's book, From Paycheck to Purpose, and read every bit of that and look at every bit of that. Dig into it. And then dig into Ken Coleman's website because you've what you are is you're on a journey, a process here of self-discovery that's very healthy and good. Um, people do it at 22, they do it at 32, and they do it sometimes at 62. And that's all okay. So just you're finding out what your next chapter looks like. And uh, the good news is, even if you pick something, you don't have to do that the rest of your life. You can just take a stab at something and give it a run. And, um, you know, but but do it with some uh, analysis and with some wisdom, and we'll give you some tools to help you do that. And I think you'll be on your way. Hey, man, and do it, go ahead and do it now. Don't wait till June. Start right now, really working hard on where you want to end up. Good hour, George. Well Fun done. Times. Thank you. Well done, James and Kelly in the booth. We appreciate you. This is The Ramsey Show. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Have a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts.